welcome to my new video so in this video i'm going to explain about performance testing uh, with jmeter tool so before starting uh, like i'll just go uh, step by step so th the first thing we need you need is a uh, installation of jmeter software so you can download it from uh, google So you can download it from, uh, from the Google. So I'm using Mac, so you can use uh, download this zip file. So once you download the zip file, you can extract it, and uh, you can store somewhere in your uh, desktop. So extracted it, and I'm using it in uh, some JMeter folder. So you can see this uh, after being extracted. Okay, you can install now. You can launch JMeter uh, using terminal, or you can just uh, double click on this JMeter. So let me just do it in from terminal so i can change the folder to bin so yeah you need always uh, to be in bin folder to launch the jmeter so right now you're in uh, bin and then the command you can use is uh, ssj meter okay once you click on this the jmeter will be launched so you can see in the background the jmeter is launched uh, the command i have typed is ssj meter uh, once you type that so jmeter will be launching and then uh, it will be providing with a new test plan okay so i have already dragged and dropped the jmx file which i already which i already written the scripts for this so in this video i'm going to explain like uh, how to write the script and then uh, what are the possible what are the possible things that you're going to check uh, when you do performance testing so the, uh, most of the time uh, people will always use uh, demo only the basic thing so right now i'm trying to explain the uh, real project uh, like what all the things that we can observe in this and then what what kind of performance testing you, you, you'll be doing so current now uh, currently i'm doing it for a mobile app so this is one of the mobile app uh, used in android and ios so it's a cross platform app so this uh, app has some features so i'm taking uh, taking up uh, the apis inside that app you can either do recording or you can take the apis so my session is like always go with the apis so if you do recording it will uh, it will capture all the mobile traffic uh, of that app as well as other other parts so instead you can if you know if you know the apis that are used in your app you can get it from your backend developer for all the apis you can get the documentation from them and then use it uh, in the jmeter so this here you can actually do both you can do the api automation as well you can also do the performance testing like adding more threads adding more users to it so let me just start so here i am uh, you can see the apis used in that app let me just uh, go uh, like how i implemented it so create a new project okay once you create a new project right click on this and then you add cache manager make sure you just double click these two options and add cookie manager so you clear cookies of it after each iteration make sure you check mark this and then the http request defaults okay so this is very important so http request defaults is like the server name you're in, in, in inheriting here so this will be common for all the apis so you know right uh, so let me uh so there will be ba basic url and then the followed by apis so i'm just using this uh, basic url here in the http request so this no one to repeat for all the other APIs in the script. So this will be repeating for each and everything. So this is like a common one that you are gonna use it for the entire script. So I'm declaring the base URL of this. So right now I'm doing it for non-prod, uh, which is like not live. So if you're doing it for live, you can just use it live. So most of the people will actually try it on a non-prod server and then uh, they, they're gonna check the performance and then they're gonna implement the same thing in production. So right now I'm doing it for non-prod. Yeah, here you can see the base URL. If you, so if you want to change it to prod you can just change the url and the api remains same so this is the advantage of this you can just change the url here okay once after creating the http default request you can just uh, uh, create http request okay once you get http request so it will be in this format so yeah so this is the http request and i'm for, i'm passing the api Okay, and what type of method it is? Get method or post method. So it's a get method, and I'm giving the name as get app version. So you can just change the names according to the API. So this is the app version. 
this API will just give the app version which app version I'm using okay so going inside this and if you want to check if it's working fine you can just come uh, like pass the values and then just come and click uh, play button if you want to see how it is working you can just you can simply add a listener a results tree okay so I'm just running only this API now and you can check the result here so it started and then stopped but it didn't got any result okay did I start this yes I started Mm, it's not showing the result tree. So let me just start the entire project. Let me just see whether there's results tree are coming or not. Mm, something is wrong. Okay, something is wrong with my script. Let me just continue. Yeah, you can see the results tree, uh, results tree like this okay and the results like this not sure maybe server might be down but let me just continue uh, explaining on how i write the script okay so this is how you do uh, if you want to check uh, the particular api you can just add a result tree and then you can check the result being here so it will show uh, that get app version is green or uh, red so you also insert some few of the conditions you're checking the response code okay i have added the assertions for this so we can go for add click on that request and then add assertions we have many kinds of assertions assertions here so this assertion is the verify response assertion okay you can add that assertion so you can see this response assertion added here and then checking the response code that's coming as 200 so if if it is something different so it will be failed you can see the result has been failed and then it says error like response code is uh, like some expected something and then the uh, it came out different on the response assertion so you can see uh, let me just show get app version okay so that you can see what is the uh, yeah so this is how we get the response and I'm cross verifying this result so whether the, my another version is 1.1.5 yeah okay and then constant timer you can uh, so this constant timer you can just right click and then add timer so you can put a constant timer like uh, after hitting this api let it take like some uh, not even like three uh, 300 milliseconds so you can just keep some timer to execute next uh, request in the queue so after like 0.3 seconds it will hit that login request so that's the concept of constant timer okay now coming to the login request this is very important okay so this is the post method and the api I place it here and the basic uh, request details are coming from here okay and then now yeah so so this is the body i received from the developer so as the passing username password unique id so the username so i can like for uh, i can check it for one api so passing the proper username and then pin and then hitting it so you can see it uh, yeah but if you want to see it for 100 users so how are you going to do it so you're going so you're going to follow this uh, template so username and then what template you're not going to pass so i'm actually passing it from the csv file as you can see here okay i'm passing the csv file let me just open the csv file okay so what are i'm passing so as you can see here so we need to pass username, password and unique ID. So in the CSV file, I'm going to keep the username. I'm going to keep the password. I'm going to keep the unique ID. So, and then, yes, it's here. Okay, if I open this, you can see this username, password and then the pin, unique ID. So the pass, uh, username, password and then the unique ID. Okay, so make sure your CSV file starts from the first cell you just start with the uh, username password and cell so don't just keep any titles like username password because you it gonna read that even the first cell and then when you pass it uh, pass it here so 
it will be reading as username so instead of that just from the first cell just try to pass the a real data so that it will take from the first cell okay you are not sure about the csv z config right so that is located in this location in my device so on the file name is app users of csv and then yeah you can give anything here employee id so i'm just passing as employee id pin and unique id the same thing you're going to use it in the extractor header manager oh, sorry sorry uh, yeah extractor here so whatever csv uh, data config that you have done okay you are given these names variable names so you're going to pass it in the login request body so this is the common uh, normal uh, syntax that you're going to use always start with the dollar symbol open braces and then the variable name that you use there and then close brace okay so this will be replaced with the csv uh, file and that value will be copied here same with the password same with the unique id so for one user you can just check if it works you can just use the entire csv config like you can uh, so in my in my place it's like having a hundred users so every time hundred users are gonna sign in and then i'm gonna do the other actions for all the other apis okay i think you understood this concept right csv data config so you're gonna use the csv file and then pass the variables pin unique id and this remains same like most of the times it remains same by default when you like uh, add a csv file okay how to add csv file config element and csv data config okay once you add that so that will be placed here uh, within that uh, api request and then you do all this part and then pass these values in the login request as a body request as a post method now coming to regular ex a regular expression extractor so this is very important so as you know that uh, once uh, any user sign in in the app so it will create a token and the same token will be used to other apis in the entire application so for this user a token will be generated let me just show how it generates for login request yeah so this is how the response will be so when the user gets logged in you can see the token being generated for each and every for every login so this token we need to pass to other apis to fetch the details okay so now we so instead of doing it like hard coding it so you have to do it with a regular regular expression extractor okay so as how, how i done in login request so So where do you find that? So here it is, uh, regular expression extractor. So add and then config element, uh, not sorry, config element, uh, yeah, post processor and then regular expression extractor. So the post processor, like, which gonna, which gonna use in the next, next, next step, next steps. So that's the, what the post processor says. And then once you add this, okay, you can uh, keep any name, like login anything. So you can, that's your wish. Or you can keep it the same thing regular expression extractor okay you can choose this mine sample only and then you can feel to check you can use this uh, body unescape and then you're gonna pass the token so this token is nothing but this one So how they passing? Okay, so they pass. Uh, so for next step is the so the developer has given as a token string. Okay, on the on the token string he is passing the token. So this token we need to generate. So this depends on the uh, developers how they given. So they, it might be like authentication token here or token string. For in my project is token string. So in your project it will be auth token or something. And here is the uh, the token that you need to pass. So this variable I am actually using here in the previous login API. So I'm passing that variable as token. So here, this will be coming from this one. Okay. So I'm giving a uh, variable token, and you have to get the regular expression of the token string. So how to get the regular expression? So this token string, 
you need to get the regular expression so we have websites for this how to like or else you can write the regular expression for this uh, token or else we have websites for this you can just follow i'll be posting this in the uh, description below of this video uh, so this link you can try it on chrome okay yeah So now I want to get the regular expression of this one, of this token, okay? So how do I get the regular expression of that? So let me just copy and paste it here. Oh, it's not working here. Cool. I can help you out on this. So, yeah, regular expression always starts with like open, uh, this bracket you can see, right? Yeah, now it's reading D. So it has a combination of A to Z, small A to Z, and big A to Z, and then by numbers. So you can see it might either contain number, small letter, or big letter. So this box contains all this combination. And then it's showing only one letter, right? So you can just put star or plus. Okay. Plus should take only the first column. So star is taking the entire actually the entire part till here. Let me just put place now. Oh good, it's taking the entire little expression, but most of the time it won't work. Uh, um you can just follow like this. Okay. And then follow the braces and then just copy the same thing again. Oh, sorry, I made a mistake. Yeah, now you can see if I put star now, yeah, it's taking only the first one because last time I just kept a uh, iPhone at the end. Okay, so followed by star or plus, so this will capture the first one, and then you have iPhone there. You can keep that iPhone there. So this is a, a normal token string how it generates uh, in my project. You can follow the same thing, and then again it will followed by numbers or small letters or big letters. So I just copy paste it. So it just took the second one again you can just put the star or plus okay it captures the second one so you can follow the same thing for entire token string okay so if you come to if you come back to project you can see here the first so there are like one two three four five formats followed by star and minus iphone okay and i'm closing it so this will if i copy this and then write it on here okay see you can see that being generated okay yeah the website has some issues but yeah it will capture only once uh, yeah this is how it is so now if you want something else uh, you, if you want to capture for Ramesh gadgets or gmail.com okay so yeah like uh, you want this email id to capture okay so you have the format you know our email id right so where is that yeah so always uh, they have some rules for the uh, email id right so this is how it is it's it has small letters it has big letters it has 0 to 9 it has some special characters you can see here and then it closes here so you can this is a common uh, regular expression you get for gmail uh, any email and then followed by add symbol yeah you can see here and then followed by some numbers i mean this number this one and then dot and then again dot com anything so this is a uh, normal regular expression you get so you can try it in a different ways how i mean getting regular expression is very easy okay you can try out this website or else if you're like uh, finding it difficult to write the regular expression regular expression so just copy paste the input text so other websites will actually try to uh, give the input text and i mean uh, yeah so where you have to find out the regular expression in this website you can actually put the text and then uh, try to get the regular expression here so if you put the text here so it will try to generate a like a regular expression in this website so it will be useful for you
just to start because i feel many difficulties when i'm doing it okay coming to the next step i'm done with csv config how to do it and then the results tree so i as i said like you can just put for this particular api and then um, place it here results tree and then you can see uh, login request okay I request there's response data and then constant timer so i'm giving 0.3 milliseconds okay so coming to the next one so this is a get api and this this is a get method and this is like followed by uh, this uh, api and uh, nothing i'm passing okay as you can see here i'm just passing the token string so token string from the previous login request so token string is the name given by the developer and then what token have to pass it to so this i'm actually calling it from the previous login request okay so this is the, again the common symbol you have to put, put the dollar symbol and then followed by open braces and then the variable that you use in the login request by close braces okay always use the head header manager okay to pass this so right click on this and then add Where do we get that header manager? Yes, in the config element, you can you'll get the header manager. Just add that, and then yeah, follow the steps. Okay, add the token, add and what all to be passed, and then authentication token, authentication tokens in the previous API. And uh, there's one more like du duration assertion. So this is a news and video article like which 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 will fetch all the articles in the app so you can just if you want to see the performance you can just put uh, like uh, the client is asking it has to load within five seconds so you can you can put that five seconds here so if it if it goes more than that and the report will be generated as file and you can like uh, uh, there's an issue to developer saying it's going more than five seconds so this usually happens if it like if you hit uh, like more than thousand users or two thousand users like that okay so this is one of the type to check uh, the performance testing a duration a session you can put a response session or uh, already explained like you can also check with the text or the response code okay constant timer so the same is repeated for others as well okay I'm just check, I'm just giving an example like what all different types that we can use. So every everything remains same here because all the get methods and then taking the token string. This also get method. This also get method. This also get method. Yeah, coming now. There's something different now like push method after logging in. So in this add card, I'm actually like this is the body given by developers for me. So if you don't want to hard code from the CSV, you can directly pass it, pass the values, and then uh, it will do the action. Okay. As you can see here, again, this is a push method. So I'm using the CSV config here, where I'm using VM ID. And the, in this location, I have that uh, VM response. OK. So all this uh, data files I'm get actually captured from the DB. I took extraction of that, like uh, I exported from the DB. And then, yeah, those values I'm, I'm passing it over here. So to be like, if I want like thousands of records, so it's like very difficult to manually enter it right so so that's the reason i actually took it from my project from the database and then i'm passing it in a csv config so upload image i'm gonna explain in the next next video so there's something that you have to do for this upload image okay how do you upload images okay if you, if any api you have to pass the upload image so you have to do a multi-part form so that i'm gonna explain in the next video but this is the basic level so this covers 90% of your performance test. So I'm co I have covered the get, post, everything. Yeah, again, it's a, this is a 
this is a get method and this get method yeah this is one more type so some of the people will actually uh, there are like two parameters path parameter and a query parameter right this is a query parameter so this so you can see the difference here in this this has only the path nothing to pass uh, here in the get api and few more apis are like you have to pass the token string like this like this okay these are some other kind of uh, uh, get methods in this get method they pass a query parameter so query saying term is equal to and then followed by like any number or anything so here they pass in the first name of that user so this first name actually i'm calling from the csv data config so this remains same okay so in this in this csv file you have a first name like there are like thousands of first names so you're taking that and passing it in here so if it's a post method you pass same thing you're passing it um, passing it in the uh, body so it, since it is a get method you're directly passing in the query parameter and this remains same csv re remains same so there's no confusion right okay get group list i think this is a get method send notification and logout so I think this is the script. So I have covered almost uh, get method, post method. In get method, there are like three types. How do you pass the parameters? Okay, might be a token string or a query parameter or path parameter. Okay, and yeah, this all APIs. So if you want to do API, if you want to do automation, you can simply put one user and then run it. You can see all whether all the APIs are working fine or not. So that that covers the API API automation as well. So if you want to do performance testing, you can just keep on increasing the threads. 90 users and then ramp up period 10 seconds and loop count are given 250. So what is this 250 now? So you given 90 as thread users, so it will run. Nine, when, it, when you hit the play button, it actually takes 90 at the same time. Okay, 90 users at the same time from the CSV config file. So, so the first 90 tables will be taken and then it will execute and then followed by so uh, so 90 users got logged in and then next api so for all the 90 users so we are following the cookie manager only for that particular user it will actually uh, we can see that record okay so that cookie if you, if you miss this so it will be a confusion so don't ever miss this cookie manager okay so for the first user it will actually uh, fetch the details for the second user it will take the cookie manager and again it will fetch the details for the third user again it will take the cookie manager and again it will fetch the details okay let me just show you how it works okay the results tree mm, yeah get app version followed by login request right Okay, this login request is then a get app request. So this request, whatever cookie data is you're getting here. Okay. This has come from the log uh, get app version. The request. Okay, you understood, right? So this cookie data is coming from the get app version of and this uh, whatever response you get here, response headers. So this cookie here, this cookie will be passed to the next one, team member services. Next step. So if you choose team member services and then you go for request so that that acts, uh, that cookie will be uh, coming over here so that's how cookie will actually help like if you're like logging with 100 users so it has to maintain right it has to maintain well right so that that particular is only it has to execute all these operations so this is how the jmeter works and you can check the response data of everything so go to response body and, ch and check the response data if you want to see in json html you can see in the formats by default it will be text you can choose any uh, like what kind of format that you want to see the res response okay so that is one thing this even this i have covered how the cookie manager will work mm, what else yeah okay, i'm going back to this one so 90 users at the same time it will hit and then uh, one API followed by the other one. It will take cookie manager and it will execute. So once the iteration is done, right? So that is one log, one loop count. So this this script will execute for two of t, two of t. Saying that 
after one iteration like 90 users hit and then it completes till logout for the 90 users and then that is a one loop count okay again it will execute for the second one so it like it will it repeats for 250 times so loop repeats for 250 times 250 into 90 you can see the remote summary put here 22,500 so everything got executed and then it got stopped you can see the results here and so this is taking not even like one second for the response on uh, average time so minimum take minimum time taken is like 0.1 second and max it has taken uh, 9 seconds for uh, for uh, like any user like for one time uh, it took like nine seconds to load for that user so this is the maximum time taken okay and this is uh, average time taken so because of the more load it might have taken long time so uh, this also you can check with your uh, client it's like if, if the server is like uh, is taking long time what will be the max time that it can be loaded or it, you can they can show you a timeout error in the app okay so as you can see some error reports you can go to the report and you can see that particular request what is the error report and then you can just copy this and give it to the developers they can look into this so what is being caused if you see in the html format you can see something yeah in terms of error so this api is actually crashing of more load okay you can report this to your developers yeah so this is executed for 90 users and then 250 times iteration so we have one more option if you want to like run it for like you want, don't want to stop it you want to check the response until it fails right okay you can keep it forever so this won't stop let me just uh, run it i'll explain it how it works let me just clear everything that's already clear let me just run it again now okay can see the results yes it's running fine now yes sorry it's in different order so login request comes first okay it already hit 90 users and then let me just add this results here again okay some other report a bit confusing here let's just stop this clear and then delete this Remo. Let me add it again so that it comes in the order. Okay, add listener summary report. Okay, and then let me just explain it for one user so that it will be more clear for you. If I add one user and then loop, what will happen? Let's see. Okay, yes, so one user you can see one by one is coming, one by one. Okay, get app version, login request. So this request. This request, I'm just passing it to the next one. Okay. And from the login request, it's actually passing to this one. I'm getting the response data. Oh, sorry. Let me just choose JSON. You understood, right? So, one by one is following. And it's a loop count. So, what will happen in the loop count? So, you can see here fifth user got logged in so all the actions are being performed for the fifth user once it logs out yeah the sixth loop starts so that is that is what the meaning of loop here okay so that that was a 250 thing so if you won't use this and then if you put 250 so this 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 operation will repeat for 250 times like if you keep one one user and then 250 so this script will stop at 250 time okay if you use 90 users and then you want to show that concept between 2500 how it came and then you can keep the value here if you want to use it and then also there is like if you use forever it will be like there is no stop for this it will be running until you are uh, until you forcefully stop it or you can keep a scheduler like for one hour okay one hour how many seconds i don't know i'm just keeping it like this so at particular this time so it will stop automatically if you keep this loop contest forever um i think i covered almost all the concepts 
yeah now coming to checking the response how do you verify like your automation is running fine i mean your app is running smooth you can see the average time here you can guess it like how nice it's performing okay my project is running smooth because not even taking a second to give the result sometimes sometimes it might go more than a second more than five seconds that time you can just check with the developers this, this api is taking a long time to load and then you can report it or you can put a uh, thousand users here and then if you want to check the response you can check the response in the summary report or aggregate report in the meanwhile you can just log in in the meanwhile you can just log in into your real application like a re real physical device and then check the response like put one lakh users here and then check the response how it behaves in the app so that kind of testing also you can do okay mm, yeah so there's one more there's one more way to there's one more way to uh, run the scripts okay so after after adding all the scripts you can just save it okay file save it and then this will be a jmx file and yeah and so once that uh, jmx file is saved you can also run it in the non gui mode so most of the like uh, uh, environment support will break actually so i'm working on mac so if i go more than 1000 users my mac cpu will be like increase and then you can see jmeter getting crashed or the other app that you're using getting crashed so that can't be handled with the jmeter so there's some drawback with jmeter so that time you can go with non gui mode so this is the this is the formula uh yeah this is the what to say so this is the command that you can run into uh, your terminal okay minus n minus t jmx file you can just drag and drop the jmx file from your uh, uh device and then results file results file is will be a path okay results file will be like x uh, sorry it will be a uh, csv file okay so where uh, that results needs to be generated that csv file okay and then path to web report so this will be a uh, folder in your um, device and then you can just drag and drop that folder so inside that folder you can see the uh, report let me just show how it how the uh, results will be yeah this is how it is so dss results is the um, path that i have dragged and drop here here instead of path to web report folder i have dragged and dropped this one folder empty folder and then it will report uh, it'll generate a report if you open this you can see the reports if you run in non gui mode okay and the csv file csv file there's a format i think this is the format i feel yeah just create a empty csv file and then drag and drop this uh, create empty csv and drag and drop that uh, csv here results file uh, that when you are i mean the script is running as you can see in the jmeter like this but you can't see in the non gui mode so it will be capturing in the csv file okay uh, what else concept is missing i think i covered almost everything yeah so you can how to how do you upload this in git okay so coming to the git so see this is my project so i created a repository i created a repo in github okay so this is the repo i have created in uh, github so what i have done like i have done git in it so you can just uh, like git is initialized in this folder and then drag and drop whatever you want so i need i need this uh, software that uh, the one that we downloaded from the uh, google the apache jmeter folder uh, and then this is the jmx file the project jmx file and then yeah th this project i need csv files to upload right so yeah even that folder i have drag and drop in this so once you drag and drop again you go to terminal go to this folder a minor j performance and then you uh, just do git status so you can see un uncommitted files of all these things and then you uh, follow the same thing git commit uh, all these files and then git push so it will be uploaded to your git uh, github so this uh, this is how you upload uh, your project to git github and then yeah so uh, what is say if other person has to download so they can go to this uh, folder and then git uh, 
clone so everything will be coming to their device but the csv file path they have to change it as you know this was my file so if you see my script this is my path right it's taking from my path so you can just tell uh, other users just to change the path okay you can tell them uh, please change like uh, this what wherever this uh, updated csv files are there uh, tell them to use that files in all the csv config files so that they will change and then it will work for them so this is the only thing they have to do it so most probably people will be using like uh, uh, in, the, in the mac they'll keep it in the desktop or if they're using the windows they'll be they'll keeping in the csv i mean c drive sorry yeah so if you're using the c drive so i think most of the th remains same only that uh, you this this will be changing as you can tell them like uh, please change your path in the csv file so it'll be working fine um this i've covered what else yeah uh, if there's any, any advanced uh, methods i'm going to explain in the next video yeah thanks thanks for watching my video i'll uh, paste that uh, regular expression extractor in the description you can find it there any questions please comment okay i'll reply to that thank you